What's going on guys? This is my bike with the Bafang BBSHD motor on it and this is a 2000 mile review so I'll talk about some of the things I've changed, some of the things I've liked, any issues I've had. This is a picture of the display here. Um, you can see I've got 2031 miles since November so just under 10 months uh, odometer 2032 max speed 43 average speed range I can I usually only go about 35 miles on a charge so I can go to work three times which means I can get about 45 miles uh, uh, comfortably on a charge with this 52 volt 14 I think it's a 14 and a half amp our battery uh it's the the motor itself and the kit's been great i've got zero complaints uh i wish i bought it sooner it's just been it's super fast it's quiet it works just as good as the day i bought it uh one of the first problems that i had was this motor started coming loose it was wiggling a little bit and that just had to do with me not tightening down the um there's a this outside ring and a lock ring inside, just not tightening down that um, hard enough. So making sure everything's tight, um, going around after a month or so and retightening all your screws. Um, the other issue I had was with this little, uh, this is the settings adjusting, is this thing is, let's see if we can focus here, is just cracked. Uh, I don't want to like make it worse than it already is, but it's supposed to have a, a whole plastic and everything. Anyway, it's super... Let's see if we can... Anyway, I think you get the idea. That whole thing cracked off. So, now these are only like 15 bucks, but um, it just goes to show this is, this is not a very good uh, high quality piece. It just broke. Uh, no issues with the throttle. Uh, I did get a new bell. I know it sounds kind of dumb, but you really do lose a lot of real estate on your handlebars based on where you put all this stuff. So getting a bell that kind of tucks in with my shifter was actually quite helpful. Um, if you do have road bars, I would almost say think twice about maybe getting this kit if you have drop bars on your bike. Because you don't have the real, real estate on the bars. You have to get one of those extenders. And, and that's fine, but here I can do the throttle with my hand here. I can change my settings, but if you're on a drop bar, these, none of these, this is, this slides on. Let's see, this, this slides on. So you'd have to unwrap your bars, slide this on. If you want to change anything around, you'd have to untape your bars. And then if you do have a bar extender for the road bars, now all your controls are up here. So you have to take your hand off of uh, the handlebar to adjust the controls in, unless it's you just set it on something and 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 that's just you just keep it on that setting um, It's really I, I I use the throttle occasionally uh, Going to work and these settings so having them right there on a flat bar is the way to go mm, The only other issue that I would say is um, I had to change my rear brake and here's my rear brake cable and originally I had actually ran it through here where the original um, mounting point was and so when I just when I changed the whole uh, the whole brake caliper hose um, the whole shebang if you will the whole setup I actually had to take this off and take these off and and reroute this around so that was annoying so when you install these how you set up your cables is really important. Don't install anything between the frame and the motor if you don't have to. Be like like this. I've got another cable. This is my rear derailleur cable. Now, um, uh, so if I if I ever want to change that cable, it shouldn't be that big of a deal pulling it out. That's fine. The thing with the hydraulic lines is uh, if you you're gonna have to re-bleed the whole system if you've got the hydraulic line down here and you just this this caliper is not gonna fit 
through here. So you'd have to either remove the caliper or remove the trig the, the, the actual lever and, and then you'd have to rebleed the whole system. So uh, rerouting your hydraulic lines um, so that they're easy to replace without having to undo the motor. And I would actually uh, advise against wrapping this up around the tube like this because say you ever want to change this system up and put it on a different bike. Um, one of the things that I did when I first got this is I heat shrunk all the connections. You see that? I heat shrunk all the connections here, here, and then I heat shrunk all of this. Here's another connection with the battery. So I heat shrunk all of that so they'd get no water, dirt, grime, grease, nothing in all of these connections. And these connections have been flawless. Um, the problem is if I want to take this kit off and put it on another bike, I now have to cut all the heat shrink off, unwrap it, and pull it off. It would have been much nicer to have just wrapped the cables up nicely so that when it comes time to taking the kit off, I can just take the whole thing off, wires intact, all the wiring intact, um, and remount it to the new system. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. And then last but not least, I would say the only other complaint is uh, pick the bike wisely. I only had one bike and I was thinking about getting a second bike to either ride and put the motor on this bike or put the motor on the new bike. And I decided for the sake of money and the fact that, that this is a really good uh, commuting bike that I would just put the motor on this bike. And I'm glad I did. This bike is a super, super awesome bike to have the motor on. And it's really, really fast. Uh, but um, unfortunately now, I can't really use the bike without the motor. So if I want to go touring, if I want to go uh, more than 40 miles or 50 miles in a day, I've lost the ability to use this bike for anything other than a place that has an electrical outlet and um, shorter distances under 40 miles. So keep that in mind, you know, if there's anything wrong with this, uh, you're out a bike. Because believe me, with that motor off, you do not want to pedal this bike 10, 20, 30 miles. So I ended up buying another bike in there, which I'm happy about. But I'm not happy with the fact that I love this bike, and now I can't use it for anything other than commuting and, um, and, and shorter distance rides. And you can't ride with anybody with this because you're way faster than anybody else on the road. When I, um, when I stopped riding this bike temporarily and started riding my other bike, it was the first time in eight months I ever got passed by a cyclist. Uh, I have never been passed by anybody um, on this bike, not even the guys wearing spandex and clip-ons. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Pick a good bike to put the kit on, but you lose the ability to use that bike for anything other than essentially commuting and solo riding under 40 miles. I was thinking about touring, doing some long distance multi-day touring and picking up another battery. And then that way, if I stayed somewhere overnight, I could charge both batteries and I could do 100 miles in a day. Uh, and probably 90 to 100 miles a day easy with two batteries and I could cover the whole coast in uh, four days or something. So in any case, uh, that's all I have to say. Um, and maybe think about upgrading your tires. These are some really good um, Schwabby uh, Marathon tires. I got them at ChainReactionCycles.com and I got the pair for like 44 bucks on sale. So don't pay... 45 55 bucks each at your local bike shop go to chain reaction and get yourself a pair for about 45 to 50 bucks um, and i would recommend getting at least 32 mil wide but i would not see it unreasonable to get 35 or 38s just to give you a little bit more cushion because when you're flying over potholes and speed bumps i mean you can catch air on speed bumps with this thing um, and it makes all the little bumps in the road that you're used to feeling 
now you're feeling at a very rapid pace because you're going super fast so some more cushioned tires would be good and a pair of earplugs because the wind when you go from 18 miles an hour up to 28 or 38 miles an hour that wind is ungodly it is so loud so think about some earplugs too um, that's it love the bike and i'm gonna love the motor and i'll be keeping it on for another 3,000 miles and see if i can get at least 5,000 miles out of this thanks guys for watching cheers